Hello everybody, welcome to another quick video. Now something a little bit different today. Uh, it's something that I've been planning for quite a while and decided that it was time to actually sort of get it done because obviously things sort of change a bit at the moment. Um, as you probably know, energy prices at the moment globally are going absolutely loopy. The cost of gas and electricity is on completely out the window. Um, the idea that I had was rather than actually sort of relying on on-grid stuff for sort of general use like sort of run the TV and sort of charging bits up. Use a little bit of what we've done on the van. So get a couple of solar panels, um, get some leisure batteries and solar controller, little inverter and see what we can make out of it. And that's what I've done. So I'll show you what I've actually bought. So first of all I will uh, apologise if there's any sort of noises, dogs barking etc in the background. We are at home and and so we do live in the suburbs, so it can be quite noisy sometimes. But what we've got are a pair of 120 watt solar panels, monocrystalline, and they're made by a company called Ecoworthy. Um, did a fair bit of research on it, they seem to get very good reviews, the panels seem to be very well made. Um, they are standard panels as well, so I'll just show you that. They're actually on an aluminium frame, um, nice and sturdy. They're glass bonded as well, so they withstand quite a lot of extreme conditions and weather temperatures, etc. Um, just get it down here. They've also got a little bracket mount as well, just pop one on just to demonstrate it. Uh, I've actually mounted them onto the wall. Um, plan is to pull you out and show you. They'll actually go on the wall just there above the patio window. Um, obviously, it won't be a permanent fix install, but an ideal position to actually put those. I think that will give us a bit of space to ex expand into as well. Now we are quite lucky that the house is fairly well south facing, it's just off south facing so that wall gets no shade in at all and gives us plenty of uh, sunlight to play with. Um, the other things that I've actually bought is a 1500 watt inverter. Uh, I wanted something that was fairly chunky. Um, gives a few more options. Um, that gives us the option then to run mains powered stuff of a reasonable amount of sort of oomph to it. Um, did look at getting one of the kits. EcoWorth actually do a kit itself. Uh, it comes with a 30 amp hour battery, uh, lithium battery, and a 600 watt inverter, which I didn't think was going to be enough for the sort of things that we're trying to do, which is why I went for the so building my own kit was slightly more expensive, but it gave me more of an option as to what we were actually doing. Um, yeah, so I've got that, and I went for a 55 amp hour lithium battery just to get us started. Um, the theory is, if everything works fine, I can start expanding the battery bank and sort of using that more as well. Um, 55 amp hour on lithium, you're getting a full 55 amp hour as well. So this would be equivalent of a 110 hour um, AGM battery or sort of lead acid. Um, lithium you do get more usable power out of it but they are a lot more expensive unfortunately. But it's a good starting point and it's something you can add to it over the time as things sort of progress on. Um, with the solar panels there was a uh, solar controller with it. It's a fairly basic PDW controller but it has got a setting in there for driving lithium batteries which is quite important. Uh, so I went for that one. Um, probably will end up upgrading that to an MPPT controller later on but it's a good starting point. So that's the kit that we've got and I think it's time to start planning out and uh, seeing where things are going and sort of do a couple of tests on the panels. So I'll grab the meter and we'll do a couple of tests. So hopefully you can make that out okay. That's the general specs of the panel. Um, I will put a link to the panels and the bits and bobs that I bought uh, down below. They're all off eBay uh, so you can sort of see the bits but yeah the specs do send to uh, be sort of well regarded on these panels which is why I went for them uh, but the first test we're going to do just make sure that they're actually generating in some daylight which is just a case of connecting the meter to the MC4 connectors on the panel and seeing what we get out. Right so the first test that we're going to do is a voltage test so we've got the meter on the 20 volt range I know from looking at the back of here the uh, open circuit voltage should be 21.6 now that's in full sunlight so I'm not expecting to get that because we've got quite a bit of cloud today but basically all we do Get your meter, pop it into the uh, the tails on there, and obviously turn it into the sun, like so, and 
Yeah, we're actually generating more than 20 volts. Just over 20. Now if I can just bring that towards the camera. There we go, that's what we're seeing at the moment. Um, obviously, sun's not sort of directly onto it, we've got a bit of cloud going on, but it's proven that panel is actually working. So, spot on, let's move on to the next one. So for this panel, I'm going to do it slightly differently. I've checked the voltage, everything seems okay. But I'm going to check the current, which means I'm actually moving the, uh, the meter around, gone into the 10 amp range, and moved this sort of, the meter wire over onto the, uh, the current settings. Now, we measure that slightly differently because what actually happens is it'll actually measure the flow of current going around the circuit. Um, so I can check, make sure these are actually developing sort of a decent amount of current, which will sort of correspond to sort of the wattage of the panel. Uh, but same process essentially. You actually sort of pot your meter tails into your uh, your solar wire, and then read the meter and see what we get out of it. So right, let's spin the panel around and see what that tells us. So, the sun now has gone in completely, typically ideal for testing, but we are seeing current coming through, which is ideal. At the moment it's like 0.45 of an amp, um, which is kind of what I'd expect because there's no real sort of direct light onto it. Um, but it's proven that you know the circuit's fine and we're getting output from it. So, let's move on and we'll do a bit of connecting. So there's two ways of actually connecting the panels together, either in series or in parallel. I apologise again for the noise in the background, like I say, we're in an urban environment, so there's bits of noise going on. But the way that I did it on the van is parallel, and it's all part of the Ohm's law and calculations and stuff like that. So essentially, if you consider that the power output can be sort of defined by the voltage of the output multiplied by the current, and given that triangle in, in that sort of range, you can actually work out that your current is the power output divided by the voltage, or your voltage is the power output divided by the amps. It all sort of ties together and you can work things out like that. Now, a couple of little bits that you almost need to know a little bit is all about sort of voltage drops and stuff like that across the length of wire, which is why you see the big pylons and stuff like that out in the countryside running massive high voltage, but it's really low current, because essentially, if you think of it, it's like trying to throw a ball. The voltage is how hard you throw the ball. The harder you throw it, so the higher your voltage, the more that distance will be before it actually falls off and you start losing the voltage. Um, it all sort of stems down to the same sort of thing. So if you've got a longer cable run, connecting in series, where you're actually adding the voltages together of the panels can actually work better for you. Um, whereas if you've got a short run like on the van, connecting in parallel means if you've got one that goes into shade, the other one will still provide the voltage and you won't actually get it sort of the one that's out of shade actually bringing the voltage down. Um, it's got pros and cons either way you do it. Now what I'm going to try on the house is actually two different ways of doing it. I'm going to try a series approach first of all and can do some tests on that and possibly if we add the other panels actually put those two in series as well but connect the two lines so the two banks of two in parallel. Um, it might work it might not but we're going to do it as a test and it's ideal to actually sort of try things out. It's not like we're doing sort of a full professional install where it's going up on the roof. This is just going to drop onto the wall and it'd be an ideal test for it. Um, but what I'm going to do, get the, uh, the bits connected up just as they are now before they actually get installed. And we'll do a test, make sure things are charging through and see what sort of outputs and inputs we get from it. One of the things that the solar panels did come with were these. Um, handy cable with the ends already crimped on. Um, makes things so much easier than sort of having to buy the separate connectors, the separate crimp tools to actually get those on. Um, yeah, so it's really handy these that's came with it. I think the five meter lengths, we should be plenty enough to get it into the house and into the controller that way. Uh, all I've done for now, just crimp some small terminals on just to get them onto the controller, just so I can do the tests on it. But I'll try and get things connected now and uh, get things wired up. Okay, so what I've done, just connected the solar control up to the battery. Um, positive to the positive terminal on the battery, negative to the negative. Now it's very important on these to actually make sure you connect your solar controller to the battery before you connect the solar panels to it. Um, the sort of power that these have to dissipate coming in from sort of a fully open panel 
um, you can actually burn out the the MOSFET controllers inside the, there that uh, do all the work. Um, another thing to remember as well, being lithium, these tend to come shipped at about 30% charge, um, so they will need a full charge before you get the best out of it. Uh, now these Ultramax batteries that I've gone for, they actually come with a charger that plugs into the mains, it's a little 4 amp charger, um, so it's probably worth actually sort of just letting that have a full deep charge. Um, 4 amp for 55 amp, you're probably looking about 13, 14 hours for a full charge uh, to get this in there, uh, but yeah, it's definitely something to uh, remember, I know so, a few people have sort of gone for lithiums, plug them in and after two hours they've run out and they've been sort of not too happy about it. And it's just down to the fact that, like I said, they actually don't ship them with a full charge. Um, but as long as you remember that, it's not too bad. But what I'm going to do now, connect up the solar panel tails and get everything sort of connected in so I can do a quick test on it while the sun's out. So, as I said, we'll get the panels. And because of the way that the uh, connectors work, it's very easy to actually connect positive to negative across these panels and you can only sort of do it one way, you can't sort of get this wrong at all. So that's those connected and we've then got the other tails which will just pop over there and we'll then connect up the main ones. Right, so what I've done, I've actually tied the two panels together um, using their sort of built-in wiring. Now the beauty of these connectors, these MPC4s, is you have a positive connector and a negative connector and they're actually distinctly different so you can't wire it up backwards but it does mean you can connect the positive and negative together which is how you set up the series panels um, but what I'm going to do now connect these wires up to the solar controller before I connect them into the panels um, and that's a fairly simple job we'll line them up to the correct point on there and just screwing that down and if you should just be able to make out on there there's your solar input and you can see a positive and a negative so that's the terminals that they go on to. So let's get those screwed in now. So that's the tails connected up. Um, you can see on there, the battery currently is sitting at 12.9 volts. Um, it's got a little battery meter on there. It's not fantastic accurate, but yeah, it works. Uh, but you can see, there's an output there with a little light bulb. Um, the other section on the right hand side there is for a low voltage LED lighting circuit essentially, so you can actually run that directly off there. It's also what it might even look at doing, um, just to keep the energy use down from the main grid. Uh, but yeah, I'll connect this up to the panel now, and you should hopefully see that uh, that change. And so there we are. You now see the solar panel icons come up with an arrow on it, and the battery indicator's flashing, so it's actually developing some charge, uh, which isn't too bad. And if I actually press this, it should hopefully there we go, that actually cycles through and that shows me how many amps are coming in from the panels at the moment, like I say, they're actually in direct shade of the cloud but it's still developing some charge and bringing the battery up right, so what I've done, I've attached the brackets onto the panels they actually come with these brackets and the mounting bolts so there's four of them per panel and I've made a little template piece up so and just need to mark the wall get that drilled and we can get that uh, popped up um, now, I've had a little bit of a measure, and I think I'll be able to do it like this. Rather than putting the panels horizontally like I was thinking, there's actually enough room to do them vertically. So where I'm going to mount these, because we're actually going to be coming in just there for the time being, uh, just through the corner of that, so I can get the wiring onto the inside. I'm going to have one panel there, and one panel there. That gives us the option then to add another panel either side there, and again, move out. There's enough room, essentially, for about six panels just on that section of wall. Now, initially they're just going to be flat against the wall, but we do have the option later on to actually build brackets to actually angle that out uh, to get it close to being the ideal optimal angle. Uh, but that should give us, going on specs, a reasonable amount of uh, input, somewhere around about the three and a half kilowatt um, input over about four hours, if the specs are a bit of believed. Um, on these panels, because what we've got at the moment with these two 250 watts is, in ideal conditions, a kilowatt output from these two panels across about four hours in full sunlight, which um, is not bad actually, it's quite a good, uh, good output, but it means you can actually expand that across there and get a reasonable bank without having to worry about sort of getting up on the roof and stuff like that. But um, it does give us the option then, if we wanted to, sort of 
get stuff put up onto the roof and sort of expand out that way. But like I said, this is a test to see if we can run as much as we can off grid. Um, like I said, the energy prices now have gone absolutely ridiculous and they're just going to keep on going up. There's no two ways about it. Uh, so the more we can do to actually be self sufficient at home, I think the better. Um, we've done a little bits and pieces like sort of change the TV for a newer model so it uses a lot less energy. Just little bits and bobs to actually bring the energy usage down. And uh, I think it's something that we're all going to have to look at doing. Uh, but yeah, so going to sort of get up on the ladder now, get things marked up and drilled, and uh, hopefully we'll start hanging the panels up. the first panel installed uh, a little bit of a faff of the wire and pulling it through I think the next one I'll actually tape up but yeah that's on fairly securely I've used some fairly heavy duty uh, screws on there so it's not going to go anywhere and it's attached through brick rather than mortar which is always good so I'll stick the other one next to it and I'll start getting the cables in and see if I can get those inside so there's two panels installed on the wall nice and secure wiring's all tidy uh, what I've actually done with the wiring, I've actually brought it down. Uh, it drops into the, uh, the corner of the patio door there, just through the wooden frame. Uh, it's just the easiest way of doing it at the moment while we're doing the tests on it. Eventually it will go through the brick and uh, be properly set. But this is alright for the test, but like I say, you've got a lot of room up there for more panels. Not only to the left, but to the right of them. Um, and I don't think it's going to be an issue with sort of... With sort of Late-ish October at the moment, and uh, we've got some mid-afternoon sun coming through. Well, it's not late afternoon really, it's sort of getting on a bit now, but yeah, so it's coming through nice, and yeah, we're ready for the next stage. So there we go. We've got the first part, which is the hard part, done. We've got the panels up on the wall. Um, can definitely confirm brick dust goes everywhere, you can't shift it. I'm absolutely covered. But they're up, that's the main thing, the wiring's in and tidy, and we're on to the inside. Um, I've gummed up the holes where the wiring goes in to put silicon around it, so it's not a permanent install. Like I say, eventually it will go in through brick and sort of there might be positioning, it depends where we decide to have the battery bank and stuff like that. Initially we're just going to pop it inside, um, just so I can monitor it and keep an eye on things. Uh, so it's all sort of just readily accessible. Uh, plus initially, because we're never in the one inverter, um, it gives us access to, to plug things in there or actually sort of we're going to run an extension around so I can run the TV in the corner. Um, just initially sort of start things moving and then we'll start migrating things as we have more batteries and more panels. Um, but for now we'll leave it there. Um, next week I'll actually do the install on the inside and get the charge controller set up with the battery and the inverter and I'll show you how those all sort of link in together uh, what it's going to look like. So. Thanks for watching. Like I say, if you'd like this video, please give us a good thumbs up. It's something completely different for a van channel, but it's all relating to what we do with the vans. It's all the same technology and all everything that we do. It's all based on that. So that's the idea of me doing this. And if you're not subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button. You'll see this install go through and I'll do updates as we sort of go along as to sort of how things are actually working. And obviously, as we sort of expand the, uh, the array, I think we should be... Uh, looking at some quite nice results from it all being well. But thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time. Take care.